According to the most recent theories coming out of some of the greatest minds of the 21st century, it has been proven that the universe as we know it isn't real. Or rather, to be more specific, isn't locally real. Do you think that apples are red? Well, of course they are, but according to physics, it is just the light reflecting off the fruit. But as of recent revelations, an apple can be red even if you are not looking at it. This means that our perceptions are important, but they are not everything that counts. Kind of weird, right? Well, if you want to learn more about this theory, then stay tuned till the end of the video. What does the word reality mean to you? The philosophers of the world, or even the makers of the 1999 cult masterpiece, The Matrix, are the ones best suited to answer this issue. This time, though, physics has a substantial contribution to make to the discussion. Now scientists believe that the universe is not locally real. What exactly does this mean? It means that our universe can't be both real and local. One of these claims must be untrue. It suggests either that our universe has interactions at a distance, or that the fundamentals of our universe function in a very exotic and odd way, only taking true shape when interacting with something. In this context, local denotes that all interactions occur inside a very small geographical and temporal area. Although we have no trouble grasping the temporal component, the spatial one presents some challenges given that we are accustomed to viewing and even handling objects at some distance. But this is all an optical illusion. We only perceive the photons that make it to our eyes, and we employ electromagnetic radiation to transmit sound to our wireless headphones. And as far as we can tell, our universe is wholly local because there is no action at a distance that we are aware of. Despite its widespread recognition, quantum entanglement is fundamentally a local phenomenon. The entanglement itself requires that the two particles be in close proximity to one another. In this context, the term real refers to the idea that, like everyday objects, quantum objects have always possessed the same set of characteristics from the moment they were born. To oversimplify a bit, their hardness or softness in touch is decided the instant they are produced. If they are not genuine, then the question of whether they are hard or soft won't be answered until long after they have been made. If we perceive quantum activity as probabilistic, either because it is inherently so in an unreal universe, or because we lack knowledge of the measured object, we must decide which explanation is accurate to determine the veracity of our reality. The concept of passive observation or measurement does not exist in quantum mechanics. Observing the behavior of quantum particles is not something you can do passively. The only way to truly know their characteristics is to physically interact with them. However, it should be noted that we have no idea which of those qualities is wrong, or even whether both are wrong. We only know that both of them cannot be correct at the same time. While asked if he believed the moon disappeared when he wasn't gazing at it, Albert Einstein famously replied, Do you honestly believe the moon is not there when you are not looking at it? The reality is significantly different from this. The death of local reality, to quote Douglas Adams, has made many people very furious and is generally seen as a poor choice. However, local realism becomes more questionable in the context of quantum mechanics. John Clauser, Anton Zellinger, and Alain Aspect, three theoretical physicists, were just awarded the 2022 Nobel Prize in Physics for their work beginning in 1972 and continuing through several tests that demonstrate the falsity of the local realism worldview. In 2022, they will each receive a part of the Nobel Prize in Physics for experiments with entangled photons, showing the violation of Bell inequalities, and pioneering quantum information science. Many of the group's co-workers were delighted at the accolades the three of them received. To put it simply, this is wonderful news. According to University of Bristol quantum physicist Sandu Popescu, it was long overdue. The award is, without a shadow of a doubt, well-deserved. Now, things might be getting a little too technical for you, so let us put it simply. Since particles do not have distinct spin-up or spin-down qualities, quantum state, before being observed or measured, scientists conclude that the cosmos cannot be locally real. As a result, local realism breaks down when the act of observation itself alters the state of a particle. In other words, when you stare at the universe, it becomes real to you. Charles Bennett, a renowned quantum researcher at IBM, told Scientific American, The experiments, beginning with the earliest one of Clauser and continuing along, indicate that this stuff isn't just philosophical, it's real, and like other actual things, potentially beneficial. 
The tests that won the Nobel Prize also proved that in the quantum world, two particles can remain entangled no matter how far away they are. This goes against Einstein's theory of relativity and local realism. Why? Because this would mean that information is traveling faster than the speed of light. Two particles may be at opposite ends of the observable universe and still remain entangled, at least in theory. Non-locality is a concept that has been around for a while. It took a long time for quantum foundations to move from the margins to the mainstream. From the 1940s up to the 1990s, the subject was mostly dismissed as a philosophy or outright crack pottery. It was difficult to get a job in academia that would allow you to study quantum foundations, and many scientific publications flat out refused to accept work in the field. As early as 1985, Popescu's consular advised him against pursuing a doctorate in the field. According to Popescu, the man warned him that his plan would leave him unemployed after five enjoyable years. There is perhaps no other area of physics as active or influential as quantum information science right now. It connects the still mysterious behavior of black holes to Einstein's general theory of relativity and quantum physics. It establishes the parameters for quantum sensors, which are finding growing applications in the research of seismic activity and even dark matter. It also helps to demystify quantum entanglement, a phenomenon at the heart of both quantum computing and current material science. So, what is the quantum state? You don't comprehend quantum physics if you think you do, according to Richard Feynman, a Nobel Prize winning icon in the field of theoretical physics. We now have a far better grasp of the quantum level and its workings. Particles like electrons and protons are indeterminate, hence the state of these particles can only be predicted with a probability distribution, according to quantum physics. It's only after observing particles that we can make educated guesses as to their behavior, and even then, only to a certain degree of certainty. Particle data, such as their position and momentum, are stored in what is called the wave function, a theoretical probability distribution. But here's where things get complicated. The very act of measurement or observation collapses this wave function into a certain particle state that we can then perceive. This is a phenomenon known as particle wave duality. This is the theoretical basis for randomness in the cosmos. The measurement difficulty refers to the fact that scientists have not figured out why or how the wave function collapses. To that end, what does the particle look like before it has been observed? The particle is in a state of quantum superposition before it is observed, making it impossible to determine its exact state. This means that there are an endless number of possible states, all of which exist simultaneously. However, when physicists first developed quantum mechanics in the early 20th century, the theory described the tiny world fantastically well. In their seminal 1935 work, Einstein, Boris Podolsky, and Nathan Rosen EPR, pointed out their disagreement with the theory due to its unsettling implications for everyday life. The EPR pair analyzed the thought experiment designed to highlight the incoherence of quantum mechanics, demonstrating how, under some situations, the theory might fail or at least provide nonsensical findings that disagree with all we know about reality. Here's how EPR would read in a more streamlined and contemporary form. From a central location, two viewers, Alice and Bob, located on opposite sides of the solar system, are each sent their own pair of particles. Spin is a quantum feature of individual particles, and according to quantum physics, it is impossible to know the spin of a particle before measuring it. Alice observes that the spin of one of her particles is either up or down depending on the direction she examines it. Though she has no control over the consistency of her measurements, when she measures up she always knows without a doubt that Bob's equivalent particle is always down. On the surface, this doesn't seem that strange. Maybe the particles are like a pair of socks, where if Alice gets the right one, Bob has to receive the left one. Unlike socks, however, subatomic particles in quantum mechanics don't have a predetermined spin, but instead take on the value of up or down depending on the conditions of the measurement. This is the central paradox of EPR. If Alice's particles don't have a spin until they're measured, then how can they predict the behavior of Bob's particles as they leave the solar system in the other direction? Every time Alice takes a measurement, she's basically asking her particle if Bob will get heads or tails if he tosses a coin. Though separated by billions of kilometers in space, quantum physics states that Alice's particles can continue making accurate predictions as though they were telepathically linked to Bob's particles. 
However, when actual copies of the EPR thought experiment is performed, the results actually support the most mind-boggling tenets of quantum physics, despite the experiment's original goal of revealing the faults of the theory. Particles in quantum physics appear to communicate with one another regardless of their separation in space, and they have no intrinsic qualities like spin up or down until they're measured. Well, that's science. You set out with a goal, but end up discovering something else. So, that is all the time we have today. We hope you enjoyed this video. Do not forget to subscribe to our channel and hit the bell icon on your way out. Oh, and before you guys leave, what do you think about this theory? Let us know in the comments below. See you all next time.